All right, Gay Lussac's Law, page five. Uh, Gay Lussac's Law, again, another example of a directly proportional relationship for gases. So, again, page five. And what Gay Lussac's Law is, is there was two guys, Gay and Lussac, came together and derived this law. And that the law is this that you can have the pressure of one thing at a certain temperature, so I'm calling it P1 and T1, be directly proportional to the pressure of 2 over the temperature of 2. Okay. Again, some people prefer P initial over T initial equals P final over T final. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. It does not matter. You go with any of them, whatever you're more comfortable with. I've always used P1, P T1 over P2, T2. It does not matter. As long as you just get everything together that's supposed to be together. So for space purposes, let me get rid of this again. A couple of things that we have to have occur. Okay? So first of all, again, it's like I could have left this up from uh, Charles Law. Directly proportional. If you double one, you double the other. Temperature in Kelvin. Got to get rid of those negatives. And then units must match. So if you have the pressure here in ATMs, it's got to be ATMs here. If it's PSI, it's got to be PSI. It does not matter. It's not like you have to convert it to one thing every time. You know, it doesn't have to always be in ATMs. As long as the two things are the same. It could be any of them. Tor, millimeters of mercury, whatever. As long as they're the same. Okay? So, I'm on page 5. I'm going to do a problem. It says a container is initially at 0.5 ATMs and 25 degrees Celsius. So, it says it's 0 0.500 ATMs. I want to make sure I get the significant figures right. And it says, at the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, which becomes 298.15 Kelvin, right? We set that equal to, it says, what will the pressure be? So we want to know the P. If now the temperature is increased to 125 degrees Celsius, which is 398.15 Kelvin. We cross multiply. I'll do the algebra on one of them, why not? 0.500 ATMs times 398.15 Kelvin equals 298.15 Kelvin times, or you know what, I might just put parentheses, times P, right? Well, we got to isolate our variable P, so we divide both sides by 298.15 Kelvin. We divide this side by 298.15 Kelvin. What does that do? It eliminates Kelvin, right? It leaves us with ATMs. Well, that's going to make sense because we said our units have to match, right? So pressure here must match the pressure here. You do the math on this. P equals three significant figures, five significant figures, five significant figures. Therefore, your answer can only have three significant figures. So you do the math on it. And with three significant figures, the answer is 0 0.668 ATM. Pretty basic, pretty simple, I think. Okay? Uh, let's go ahead and do number... What the hell? We'll just kind of keep on checking. We'll do number two together. Let's do a couple. We'll do numbers two and three. And then I'll stop and upload this to YouTube. So here we go. Number... Two. Number two says a container is initially at 47 millimeters of mercury. Very good. And when it's at 47 millimeters of mercury, it's at 77 Kelvin. Cool. That means I don't have to do any converting on that one. It's already in Kelvin. That's equal to, what will the pressure be? So P, and it's going to be in millimeters of mercury because they have to match. When... The temperature is, ooh, 25 degrees Celsius. Well, that becomes 298.15 Kelvin. You cross, multiply, you do your algebra. Two step figures. 
two seven figures, five seven figures, and for your answer, can only have two seven figures. So when I do the math originally, I get this. It's a weird thing. I get 181.99, right? But I'm only allowed two seven figures. So it's a little tricky here. So what I did was I said, okay, this is 180, no decimal place. Units have to match, right? So therefore, it's 180 millimeters HG. All right, which brings us to number three. Now, one of the things I've told you is I think number three is gonna ask us for temperature. Again, I am not, not going to be a stickler on significant figures with regards to temperatures. I just think it's too hard to predict when you're making changes between Celsius and Kelvin and vice versa. So close is going to be the kind of the guider here, okay? So 248 torr in this problem. And the temperature at that point is 273.15 Kelvin or 0 degrees Celsius. That is going to be equal to 345 torr. So that's the new pressure. What is the new temperature? So you cross multiply, you do your math. When you do your math, you're going to get 380 Kelvin. Significant figures. Well, I said, or actually, I'm sorry, that's not significant figures. The problem gave you this in Celsius. It gave you 25 degrees Celsius. Therefore, you must give your final answer also in degrees Celsius. You take 380 degrees Celsius, you turn it into Kelvin, and what this ends up becoming is, I believe it would end up being 106.5. Or, you know what, since I had three things here, why don't we just call this 107 degrees Celsius. Again, I'm going to give you some leeway on some new figures here. But that's Gay-Lussac's law, very similar to Charles' law in the math, very similar in the process. Just have to change it and your mindset to be pressures instead of volumes.